Hello everyone. So in this section, we will be discussing about bare villager oxidation reactions. So this reaction uses a reagent that is a peroxy acids. Do you guys remember peroxy acid from your radical chapters? So it is basically a carboxylic acid. Carboxylic acid, right? Carboxylate group. And then uh, we're going to have one extra oxygen on top of that. So that's pretty much a peroxy acid is. So this reaction uses a trifluorodiverative of acetic acids. So So let's enlarge this. CO minus. All right, so we, we will be using this molecule to do all of our reactions. So this reaction, pretty simple. So it takes an aldehyde or ketone, no matter which one you want to use. So it take, a, uh, take an aldehyde and You know what, let's just do this. So this will bring our reactions. Oxidize an aldehyde. We make carboxylic acid. So we will be making carboxylic acid and also the side product. Will be we have carboxylic acid. So the reason this is called an oxidation reaction because earlier you had two CO bonds, right? So in this molecule, how many CO bonds we have? Three CO bonds. Two towards the carbonyl here and one towards the CO oxygen there. So that's why it's the oxidation process. Uh, same thing can be uh, said if you have a ketone, so let's say if you have a ketone, CH3, CO, and then we will react with the trifluoro of this peroxy acid. So the product that you'll be getting, so usually what happened, the last oxygen is going to be entered between O, CH3. Do you still have how many stones here? So we still have three CO bonds. And that is why this is an oxidation process where earlier you had two CO bonds between carbon and oxygen. Now we have three bonds. So that's why it is called oxidation reaction. So let's let's talk about the mechanism right now. All right, so mechanism is pretty simple. Uh, no matter uh, is it aldehyde or ketone, and you So let's say um, you want to have peroxy acid. O minus. So let's be uh, more specific. Let's have the actual reagent that we want to react. So to be precise, let's the molecule. Okay, so right now our carbon is our delta negative and oxygen is, sorry, carbon is delta positive and oxygen is delta negative. 
So how does the reaction will proceed? It will proceed by a nucleophilic attack on this carbon atom. You all agree? Right? And obviously that will push the pi electron towards the oxygen. So the intermediate that you will be forming is going to be R D O R dash O O O. All right. So at this point, so I did. Did I do any mistakes? Yes, I did. Uh, can you guys notice it? You all are correct. So the pi electron will be move forward. So you're going to have a tetrahedral intermediate that will uh, have the oxygen, the negative charge on top of oxygen. So what we do here, so we the tetrahedral intermediates are not very stable to begin with, right? So uh, you, you can collapse uh, the you can bring back the pi electron and break the CO bond. If we do that, you are making your reactant. So that's why the reaction is gonna be equilibrium, but we're not gonna do that. So here is uh, the other possibilities that will happen. Look at the bond that is between these two oxygen. This is a peroxide bond, the OO bond. So this bond is highly reactive and it's very easy to be broken. So what happened is, when when we bring back the pi electrons the one of the alkyl group with the two bond pair will move towards the oxygen and we will be breaking the oo bond so this is all happening together so our product is just going to be a basically a rearrangement of this entire reaction again this is not going to be a reversible process so So what happened here is now the R will not be attached to carbon anymore. Instead, it's going to be attached to, let's keep, keep things pretty. Instead, it's going to attach to oxygen. Sounds good. So, so what did we make? So we actually made an ester. So right now, uh, let's, let's do another example with real carbon atom and hydrogen, no R and R dash. See if you can figure out the product. So uh, before we do that, the tendency, the relative tendency to migrate to migrate to It's gonna look like something like this. So the hydride, you can call it. That's that's it has the higher tendency to migrate. Then uh, we have tertiary alkyl. I make a sense. This is the rate of migration. They have tertiary alkyl. almost as big as phenol and we have our that have the least is methyl is most likely right. if you can figure out a product so let's say if you have ch Carbonyl because the carbonyl carbon is our 
live the Seneca. So what will we make? We'll make it C O. So it is going to be CS3. And then we have our it's not very stable, so there will be some sort of rearrangement happens. So uh so everything starts here. The peroxide bond is very label, so it's gonna get cleaved up. And simultaneously, to balance the octet row on oxygen, one of these would move, right? Option A or option B. Which one? Look, look, look on the uh, relative migrations. So the hydrogen has the highest, like it's most likely to move, right? So option B would be the better option. So we move that. Then simultaneously, to maintain the octet on carbon, we have to bring back the electron. So the product that you will be forming is going to be CS3. CS3. Plus the is basically a... F e C O O minus. Any questions? Okay, let's do uh, another problem. Which is attached to benzene ring and then we have CS2, CS3. All right, so, so, so straightforward O minus will attack, will move forward and that will give us It's lagging today. So it's not going to be CO anymore because the pi electron has moved up. So it is going to be. Bring back O, O, CO, CF3. So peroxide bond is very label, so it is most likely to be broken first. So we will move back. We'll break the OO bond. And then what we're we gonna be doing. So we have two options. Either I will move the phenyl group or, so that's our option A, phenyl group. And what's the other options? I could move my alkyl group with the both pair of electrons. So which one would be the most likely to happen? So if you go back to that same chart, so the primary alkyl has the lesser tendency. Phenyl, on the other hand, has higher tendency to move. So uh, we will move the phenyl group So the option A is more likely to happen. So let's let me erase option B. And obviously the carbon atom here at the center, uh, to maintain the octet, we have to bring back our CO as well. Bring back the pi electron. 
So the product that you will be getting from here is going to be oxygen CS3. So the oxygen is inserted between the phenyl and the carbonyl group. So let me make a different color for this one. So the oxygen is inserted between the phenyl and carbonyl group. So the oxygen is the same oxygen that is on the red here as well. So the product and the side product is obviously going to be CF3, CO, O minus. Good. All right, so let's stop here.